Hello and welcome to this episode of Smash Engineering. Today, per viewer request, we're going to do kind of a how-to video on a rider mower. Um, I didn't think about it, but I guess there's probably or could be potentially a lot of people who are intimidated by something like this because, like a car, this is a moving machine and it can do damage and it's got blades on the bottom for all the warning signs on it. It could be intimidating. So we're going to do this video today and kind of familiarize you with a rider mower. This happens to be a John Deere D105, but we're going to use this mower to kind of familiarize you with the mower that you may come in contact with. Let's go ahead and dive in. First things first, you need to know where your engine's located. On most rider mowers, the engine's located up here in the front. There are a few where the engine's located behind the seat, but that's not hard to differentiate. Now this is your engine. This is where you would put oil. This is your battery. Obviously the red here is your uh, red or the plus sign is your positive side. So you need a good battery. <clears throat> Obviously you need a working engine. Um, you can check your oil by pulling the dipstick out and looking at, there's a little safe area here. Let's see if it'll focus. And you can check your oil should be within that area, as this one is. And next you'll need to know, I guess, where the hot areas are. This is where you will not want to touch once you've had this running. This is your exhaust system up here. This tube coming out, it's very hot after it's been running. It's not hot now because we haven't been running it. But anyway, that's that. It's very important to not mess around in there while it's running. Unless you have experience with these things, in which I don't think you're probably watching this video if you do. Anyway, <clears throat> for, for this and uh, mower in particular, you put your fuel, your fuel goes in right here. So you remove that cap and pour your non-oil mixed, non-two cycle, just standard fuel. You can use, uh, I think they call it recreational fuel, uh, if you want no ethanol content, which I highly, highly recommend. So that's where you put your fuel. Next you'll want to make sure that you have your key. <clears throat> on this mower, just like a vehicle, the key goes in to the ignition. You'll then want to verify that all of your um, things are in the off position. So this is off. This would be engaged. This is off here. As you can tell by this, um, the forward shows the little gear with the turning, which means it's engaged. And next, things like this you'll want to verify. See, this is not in neutral. So you'll want to be in neutral, which is right in the center for this one. <clears throat> and then the other thing you'll want to verify is that your blades are all the way up. This is your blade adjustment. If you have it all the way down, the moment you start cutting, you're going to be cutting right on top of the dirt. So we're going to put that at its highest setting. And then you want to notice this is your throttle. You'll want to make sure that this freely moves because you'll use this to engage what they call the choke right here and that will help you start the engine on a cold day. You don't always have to use the choke, but um, it does help to start the engine. On this particular mower, you have a parking brake, so you can engage this pedal down here is the brake. You can engage that and then lift up, and that holds the brake in place. That's for if you're maybe on a hill or if you have to get off with it running. Now, I'm trying to show you all these things before I actually start it, because once it's running, I'll probably have to just um, mute the sound and maybe do a voiceover. The other thing you'll check before you get on and start running it is your tires. You want to make sure all your tires have the right amount of air. Another thing you can visually do is check all your belts. Now this is something you want to do when it's not running, but you can take a look at all your belts. Make sure they're not dry rotted, cracked. Make sure you don't have too much grass jammed in the belts. So now that we've done that, let's go on to the procedure for starting. We're going to get on. First things first. Make sure you got your key, you have lights on, you have ignition on, and you have crank. <clears throat> so after you start it, when you let go of the key, it's going to go back to the run position. So first, we're going to make sure that we put our throttle all the way up into the choke feature. We're going to make sure, again, verify that your blades are off. Now, most lawnmowers have a safety, and I'll go ahead and ex explain that to you. The blades are now engaged, and if you see, I press the brake. Nothing will happen. So if I disengage the brakes, or the, gate, the blades, sorry, and disengage the brake, again, nothing will happen. So there are some safeties. Now, older lawnmowers, or possibly if you bought a used mower, um, they may have disabled some of those safety features. So it's up to you, the operator, to make sure you're being as safe as possible. So make sure no one's around your mower. 
you're going to press your brake down. You're going to make sure your blades and everything else are disengaged. You're going to put your throttle in the choke position. And if the mower's been maintained properly, it should start up fairly fast. The moment it starts, you want to pull back on the choke. That's procedure on how to start it. So now that you're there, you know the general things about the mower. You know this is your height for your mowing deck. We're gonna show you now how to engage the deck. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the whole procedure over again. So feel free to come and uh, record this for people. Um, so that way, um, if, if you didn't see it the first time or if the filming wasn't done good um, the first time, we can show you. So here we're gonna turn on the key. We're gonna press the brake. Now because I already choked it once i'm not going to choke it again and we're going to hit the key and it's just a matter of holding it over for a couple seconds and right until it's running then you let go now you can engage the parking brake and you can actually safely get off the mower and it's not going anywhere so next thing's next we're going to show you how to engage the blades and i'm sorry if you can't hear me that well I do have to have the RPMs up, but here we're gonna go ahead and turn this on. And if you hear all that ruckus that happened, that was the blades turning on. So now your blades are running, but your your lines and get close enough to things um, which I'll throw a little cutscene in here uh, right at the end of me talking of, of just showing how I get close to stuff and um, I try to make probably the least amount of uh, the least amount of trimming as necessary I don't like to use a weed whacker and I don't like to use a push mower because I'm lazy and uh, these things are fun to ride so uh, let's go ahead and jump into a little bit of maintenance on this 
um, so that if you do have one, you kind of have an idea of uh, where your oil filter is, where your air filter is, and that kind of thing. So let's go ahead and jump into that. We're going to open this after your engine has cooled. For this particular engine, it has a, a cover over the air cleaner. Some have a metal clasp, some, uh, wherever your carburetor's at um, is where your air filter will be. So on this particular D105, you're gonna turn these to the unlocked position. You're gonna give it a slight pull. This is your air cleaner. If you pull up on the front, it comes out. You can check and inspect it. That's all there is to that. So changing your air filter is as simple as opening up that and changing that. The oil filter is a little more in depth, and that is right here. You want to make sure that you get the exact one that your mower calls for. Um, I do have a video about making one, uh, making a, putting a larger one on. Um, I don't recommend that. That just worked out for me, and I thought maybe other people would enjoy it. Um, I did make sure that it was the same flow rate and everything, because you don't want to starve your engine for oil. This here is your carburetor. <clears throat> this down here is the safeties. If you follow your fuel line this way, you'll find your fuel pump. And the reason this model has a fuel pump is because the fuel tank located in the back behind the seat is actually level with or lower than the carburetor, so you can't have what they call gravity feed. So if you see this fuel line comes down and goes into the tank in the back, but this is your fuel filter, you'll want to keep that new and, and refreshed. And honestly, you can look at the numbers on it sometimes um, it'll tell you exactly what to Google so that you can order the correct one. Other than that, your battery, if you live in an area where your climate gets cold in the wintertime or, or you have a period where you're not using it, you'll want to put a battery tender on these. I would just say go off the suggestion of whoever sells you the battery tender on whether you should leave it plugged in on the mower, whether you should remove it, bring it in uh, maybe your garage or something. Just follow their instructions because you don't want to cause a fire where one's not needed. Um, other than that, on this side over here is your drain. Every mower has a drain. Some are underneath. This one is conveniently located on the side here. This you would just turn and pop out, and then your oil will come out. If you watched my other video, we just replaced the starter on this. Um, that was the video where one of my subscribers uh, asked me to make this video. So I appreciate you asking me to make this video, and um, I'm hoping that this will help you out and make you more comfortable with it. Because if there's one thing we like to do it's to help people so um, I can't think of anything else the other the other warning things is do never pick this up and and put your hands in here if you see this is your blade the other thing you want to check for is to make sure your blade stays sharp and stays operational so these blades weren't sharp were sharpened that that long ago beginning of the season and uh, but yeah this is how close your blade is so if you open this up with it I would just say don't even touch this if it's running because you could forget and leave the blades engaged, you never know. But So don't pick this up when it's running. Um, in fact, I don't know any time I've ever picked this up at all, but you can definitely check down in here and just make sure it's not getting clogged up. You will get, if you ever cut in the rain or with wet grass, you'll get this nice like cardboard, press board feeling grass clippings up underneath. And over time, those will clog it up and, and dull your blades and cause more stress on the mower. You can see there's some here. So sometimes you can't choose when you're gonna cut. Sometimes the only time you're available to cut is when the grass is semi-wet. And if that's the case, just, you know, try to think about taking smaller chunks and um, treat your mower like it's your best friend because without these, you're pushing it. And I mean, I know that I could use the exercise, but we don't always have the time and sometimes we're sore and uh, we just need to get the chore done. So let's see, I'll cut to some cut screen, uh, or sorry, cut shots of me cutting, uh, mowing up close to things. And um, other than that, uh, thanks for watching, and I appreciate you guys' views. The other thing, I hope you can hear me, the other thing I didn't uh, talk about, too, is your overlap of your rows. Now, what I like to do, you'll see us coming up, I don't know if you can tell, it's been cut there, but I like to cut so that this tire is right on the taller grass. It'll give you a little bit of an overcut. You want the blade to cut a little bit over into the spot you already cut just to help with your efficiency and making sure you get it all cut. So I usually use that line as like a reference. So you'll see that line there. I'm going right along it. Another thing I'll show you, not every mower has this option, but if you want to leave the blades 
engaged and go in reverse, it will stall your motor. So we put it back in neutral. This has a push button where you push this button down. You then put it in reverse. That way if you get too close to something and you don't want to turn on and off your blades all the time because it will wear out your clutch, you can just hold down this button for reverse. I don't know, maybe. Oh, you just have to press it. I thought you had to hold it. Um, and that allows you to go uh, in reverse while your blades are engaged. Otherwise, you must, if I just, without pressing that button, put it in reverse, the mower wants to stall. So what we have to do is disengage your blades. With the blades disengaged, you don't need the RPMs up so high because the engine's not working very hard. So we're gonna turn it down a little bit. We're gonna put this in reverse, which is back on this one or towards the R. And then simply press down on the gas pedal. But this is how you go in reverse. So if you want to cut your grass in reverse, that's how you would do it. I don't recommend it, but I'm not your boss.